Wow, oh wow, boy, oh boy, what a journey you are about to embark on. At the best of times, the grind for Luna's Hell is a rage-inducing, time-consuming monster. And now you're telling me you want to try and go for this thing solo? Are you crazy? I told you that bitch crazy! No, I'm just kidding with you. Although it's difficult, it's by all means doable. Now, I went on the quest from around about 1,600 points to 2,100, the actual point where you hit Luna's Hell and you complete the quest completely solo. And there's definitely some benefits to doing it that way. So don't be discouraged. I'm about to break down step by step how to get this bad boy. Now step one, the quest itself. You're gonna have to complete 10 competitive matches, get 150 hand cannon kills, 200 solo kills, complete three rumbles matches, and get 100 hand cannon precision kills. And then finally, the most difficult part of the quest, reaching Fabled. Now that you understand what needs to be done to achieve this goal, let's gear up. Comp is a sweaty mess at the best of times, so you're gonna wanna go in at your best with your most lethal weapons possible. In order to get the best weapons for the job, you're gonna have to dip your toe in, that's right, gambit baby, as you're going to need the solar hand cannon trust and the bygone's pulse rifle will come in handy as well. But the trust will be your best friend as it can rival any hand cannon, even the Lunas Howl, at the high ranks of competitive play. And the trust is perfect for completing all of the quest steps. The 150 hand cannon kills, trust. The solar kills, trust. Who can you rely on to get the 100 precision kills? Trust. I'm telling you now, trust in the trust is going to be your best friend in completing all of the beginning steps and then finally getting you to that sweet, sweet fabled rank. Now that you're set up with your primary, it's time to strap up with a secondary. Although the Crucible is swarming with shotgun hungry apes right now, it's still possible to use a sniper. And if you like that playstyle and you play better that way, by all means use one. But I'm not going to recommend one here because shotguns are just too powerful right now. There are two standout shotguns that I'm going to recommend. They're the Dust Rock Blues and the Blue Bad Boy, the Botheration. The reasons these two are the best is because they kill consistently from the 9 meter range. Now you all should have access to the botheration as it is a year one shotgun and you can farm the dust rock blues from a lost sector on earth and also one on mars. Now if you are intending to spend time trying to farm the dust rock blues and are looking for the god roll to go after, in my opinion this is what it is. You're going to want to have full choke, accurized rounds, slide shot and then finally rampage. That in my opinion is the god roll and if you're able to obtain that please quickly send me your account details because I have not yet been able to get that and would very much like to use it. Now once you've completed the initial hand cannon kill, solar kills and precision kills you can get funky with the telesto and the bygones but I'm not really going to recommend this as I still believe that the shotgun and the trust are going to be your best weapons in terms of taking on this challenge to get the lunas howl but if you play better with a pulse rifle and you play better with a telesto by all means switch it out once you've completed them steps but there's a big reason why i would not recommend using an exotic primary or secondary and we're going to move on to that now the warcliffe coil and the colony are absolutely ridiculously beastly heavy weapons both of these heavy weapons can turn the face of a game on its head if you are able to use them correctly and get good with them now i'm going to recommend the warcliffe coil over the colony purely for the fact that it kills so easily you can get so many multi kills with it very easily and also for the fact that it has fantastic super shutdown potential. You can take most supers out with one shot of this rocket. That's why I'm going to recommend it over the colony. But don't be discouraged if you prefer the colony, use it because that thing's an absolute monster as well. Alright then, now that your loadout's enough to make Shaxx proud. <laughs> what class do you want to play? because some are definitely better than others when it comes to competitive in PvP. I've just finished a series where I go over the best skill tree for each subclass, for the Hunter, Warlock and Titan, for all of their designated subclasses. So if you're looking for some guidance and want to see what the most optimal class is for you, please consider watching them videos, as I think there's some good tips in there that can help you out. But I'm now going to quickly go over some of the most seen and most used classes in the high levels of competitive play. You're going to come across probably the most used Hunter, way of a thousand cuts purely because blade barrage is so good and the mobility is fantastic on hunters the titan you're going to come across the code of the defender the top 
skill tree for the Sentinel. You're going to come across Code of the Missile, the new one for the Arc Titan that came with the Forsaken expansion, and then for the Warlock, the all famous, the infamous, a two minute fission, the thing that will Nova Warp you into another dimension if you let it. But I would most likely say that Hunter is the easiest to pick up and play because it allows you to have a reactive super in Blade Barrage that's just absolutely ridiculous right now. And also it gives you a lot of mobility and mobility is the key to the meta right now because there's so much shotgunning and so many engagements happening in a close quarters environment. You wanna be able to react quickly and shotgun. And whether you're shotgunning offensively or defensively, the Hunter is the way to go to give you the easiest edge. But again, don't let this sway you. If you play better on any other the class and want to play that make sure you go with that because you're always going to play better when you are having fun and you're playing to your own strengths now that you're all set up it's time to sharpen them skills baby especially if you're someone who doesn't normally play pvp and are literally just jumping in for the first time to try and get the lunas how the best place to learn in my opinion is rumble and here's why if you go into quick play and just play a normal game you can often get carried through by your team and have no real impact on where the game goes and why you win the game also a similar situation you can go into a game of quick play come up against a very good enemy team and get absolutely ran over and not learn anything in the process whereas in rumble yes you will come across a consistent amount of good players so you'll be challenged and guess what if you lose it's all your fault and there's no excuses you died because you made a mistake figure out what that mistake was so it doesn't happen again it's incredibly useful and very humbling and allows you to pick up air quotes game sense very quickly a good example of picking up game sense in rumble is let's say you're playing a normal game and you continually to get killed by heavy and end up losing the game because of it instead of saying no skill heavy using cunt next game make sure that you control the part of the map where the heavy spawns so you'll always have line of sight on it so if anyone goes for it you can kill them and then hopefully pick it up yourself and then you can be the one that kills the rest of the lobby with the heavy and makes them rage instead of you that's a typical example of figuring out what works in the game and what's going to lead you to win and there's lots of scenarios that you can pick up from rumble like this you can pick up map control how to control maps properly figure out spawn points, figure out how to control where the enemies are spawning and hopefully always be able to have a line of sight on them, figure out how to control the heavy and many, many more. Rumble is a great place which is pretty unforgiving but it's going to allow you to learn very quickly if you aren't used to the crucible and the fast style of play that competitive brings because in Rumble you're always looking for the next engagement once you've finished one just like in competitive, it keeps you sharp. Another massive benefit of Rumble is you're going to come into a lot of 1v1 situations and improving your primary sharp and your shotgunning skills in 1v1 situations is massive to competitive because that is what is going to come down to in them tight situations you're going to have to make sure you're winning your 1v1s so it allows you good practice so go into a few games of rumble before every competitive session to make sure that you're getting sharp so when you go into competitive you can immediately start playing at your best and you're not going to throw away points for no reason with all that out of the way now put your boots on baby because it's time to jump two-footed into competitive <laughs> I'm going to list off now a few quick tips to improve your overall comp game. Now I am going to do a video in the future where I do more in depth tips but for now this should be the basics to get you off and running to improve as a solo player and get you to Lunas Hal. Number one is as simple as it gets team chat, game chat, whatever you want to call it. Knowledge is power in this game and that's all I've really got to say about that. If you don't want to go and use that facility, you're just putting yourself at a disadvantage. If you're serious about getting this weapon, you need to try and be communicating with your teammates. Even if it's not you speaking on the mic, just being able to hear other people's call outs is going to help you out a lot. Tip number two is stay with your team but create angles. The worst thing you can do is stick with your team like a leech and just stay stuck to their hip because all that's going to do, yes, you're going to be able to win some gunfight because you're just going to be outnumbering your opponent but when you come up against better players you're going to end up coming up against other people doing the exact same thing it's very easy for you and your teammate to lose that engagement if the opponents are better shot the best thing you can do is go the same direction as your teammates but make sure that you're creating angles what i mean by this is look at the same area as your teammate but be in a different position if there's a doorway and you know that you can get a line of sight on it from a different angle go from that different angle so your opponent has to choose does he want to shoot at you or does he want to shoot at your teammate both you and your teammate are looking at him so you both should easily win that gunfight with hopefully none of you dying 
and that is the best way to do it it's very it's a lot more difficult to shoot against two people that aren't in the same location it's just basic game sense but you want to always be trying to go the same direction as your team but always trying to be creative and creating an angle if your opponent can't see you and you've got first shot advantage you're most likely going to win that gunfight as long as your shot's consistent so always be striving to create an angle where your opponent's not looking at you whilst being with your team i can't stress that enough tip number three for God's sake, don't tilt. Do not lose your head in this game mode. I'm going to tell you right now off the bat, you're going to get shafted. People are going to leave the second the game starts. You're going to get garbage teammates. You're going to play against people that are just simply better than you. If you go in with a mindset that you're going to crush every game, you're going to beat everyone, you're going to have a very humbling and painful experience in this quest to get the Lunas Howl. I'm telling you now, go in there with the mindset, yes, to win games, but to just try and play the best Crucible that you can possibly play. Because the second that you start getting angry about the little things, you're going to start playing even worse, and you're going to end up either giving up on the quest or just completely getting run over by every team you come across and one big tip i'll give you is don't leave games and also make sure that even if you're getting crushed in a game you're still absolutely giving it your best and i'm going to come on to why that comes in handy in a minute number four this is a massive tip for if you're looking into getting to the crucible seriously and taking your games to the next level learn the maps and what i mean by this is don't just learn the general maps you need to learn how the maps play where are the power points where are the spawn points what positions do i need to hold a good example of this is if you're playing a game of control for instance on the map legions gold it's you're gonna think oh yeah it's typical it's a game of control i want to hold a or c and then make sure that i hold b now you'd be wrong if you you go in with the mindset of just holding A and B you're going to lose that game if you come across any kind of a decent team because the way B is positioned is isolated away from the heavy and heavy is what overall is going to win you games because if you control the map you can control the heavy and if you control the heavy you can control the game so if you go to B is isolated from the heavy and then what's going to end up happening is your, your opposing team once you've captured B is going to capture A and C you're going to be stuck across that bridge isolated from the heavy very difficult for you to get it your opponents are then going to get the heavy and they're going to be able to kind of spawn trap you in that b spawn now if you didn't know that and you go into a game you're going to end up throwing that game away potentially to people that are worse than you just because you've gone in with the wrong strategy so i'm saying as quickly as possible try and make sure that you learn the best positions to hold on certain maps and the best points to capture in certain game modes there's strategies for all different games out there and there's definitely content on youtube and tips that you can find of people giving you true honest advice and the best place to make on certain maps these are things you're going to pick up over time but i'm just going to recommend just basically going in there and trying to think where's the heavy you always want to be close to the heavy you don't want to isolate yourself away from it so try and make sure that you're positioning your points and always trying to control the area of the map around the heavy that's a good place to start but you want to make sure you do your research to take the game to the next level so you don't throw away silly games with silly decisions tip number five solo is not the angolo now <laughs> you can get to fabled relatively easily if you're a good player whilst playing solo but it is much easier with a team and especially if you're serious about going for the not forgotten after you reach the lunas hell you are 100% going to need a team because that just gets a whole lot more difficult so to put you in good stead for that and to put you in good stead for getting the Lunas Howl, I try and start recruiting people in as quickly as possible. Now, if you're someone that 100% refuses to play with anyone else, that's absolutely fine. Ignore this tip and use the ones I've gave you previously. But if you are looking, if you are someone that wants to play with a team, this tip's going to help you out a lot. Make sure that in every game you give it your best, even if you're losing, like I mentioned earlier. And then after every game, what I want you to do is look at the lobby. Who did well in that game? If the person was on your team and they did very well, send them an invite to the game, send them a friend request. If the person on the opposing team did really well, send them an invite to the game, send them a friend request. Most likely if they're playing solo, the first thing they're going to do is check how you performed in that game. If you did really well and topped the leaderboard, they're going to think, oh man, I'm going to pair up with this guy and we're going to win loads of games. Same as if he was on your team already, he knows, wow, we've just won that game. This guy was pretty good. I'm going to team up with him. And even if you've just got absolutely crushed by your opposing team, this is what I mentioned earlier, if you're getting absolutely beaten down by your opposing team, but you are standing up and you are putting up a good fight against them, they potentially might even team up with you because they've thought, wow, this guy was actually doing pretty well against me, even though he lost the game. 
Your reputation is everything when it comes to the Crucible, and reputation is everything in competitive. If you've ever played any game competitively, you know you're only a few games away from getting dropped from a team. If you maintain a consistent level of performance, people are going to want to play with you, and also a good positive attitude. If you do manage to get paired up with these people, make sure you play your best, and make sure that you have a good attitude. No one wants to play with a toxic player. That's the way to play with people consistently. Be a good person to be around, be a good teammate, be friendly, be friendly, and just be courteous to other players if you do manage to team up with them because it's gonna make your whole journey a lot more fun and it's also gonna make it a lot easier to get the Lunar Tower. Now, I really hope that the tips in this video have gave you guys some insight on the best weapons to use, the best classes to play, and overall, a few tips that are gonna help you out in general in competitive. I genuinely hope that they help. If they do, please feel free to leave a like on this video and also leave a comment on what you thought about the video and any other tips you can think of down below to help other players. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching this video. If you do wanna see more content on my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching, guys and have a great day.